The Cistron Donner fire detection system is an example of an electro-pneumatic system. Um, with this system, you have uh, a tube, and in it, uh, we have a gas, uh, helium. And inside uh, there also, we have this material called, say, titanium hydride. So what this material does is, when it gets uh, hot, it releases uh, hydrogen and uh, as it cools it absorbs hydrogen so uh, if we look at it in a circuit for example yeah um, so here's our our tube and it is connected uh, to this circuit here so the pressure of the helium and the hydrogen when it, when it's released is all acting on this piston let's say and uh, this is acting on these pressure switches and these pressure switches then uh, connect to this electrical side of the of the circuit so if for example the um the tube is damaged and there's a leak and all the gas goes well if all the gas goes then there's no gas pressure on this side acting on the piston so if i just go back for a second so the switch is in in this position when the gas goes there's no pressure acting on it so um, this switch will, will flick over to the right. Okay, and we have a 28 volt supply and that's now coming in through this 10 kilo ohm resistor and the current will now, now let me draw that in, the current will now uh, go through this 10 kilo ohm resistor and this 10 kilo ohm resistor and we're gonna measure the voltage at this point. Okay, that's coming in here. So uh, the voltage at this point uh, is, well, it's 28 volts divided by 30K, 10K, 10K, and 10K, and then multiplied by the 20K. So this is the voltage at this point. And that gives me 18.7 volts. So that goes into some sort of a comparator, and it knows that if I get 18.7 volts, then I have a fault. So I'll give a fault warning. Now let's say the um, the detector is in a, a system where it gets actually too hot. Okay, so it's not a fire, but it gets very warm. Well, when it gets very warm, the uh, helium in the tube uh, will expand, but it, it can't expand because it's in this fixed tube. So the pressure of the helium increases, and that pressure then will act on this piston, and it's going to cause this switch here to close. So if I go back, that switch closes. So when that closes, then the current now comes through this 10 kilo ohm resistor and then down through here. Okay, and again, we're measuring the, the voltage at this point. So the voltage will be the 28 volts divided by um, 2 10, 10 K. So this 10 K and this 10 K, that's 20 K. And then we multiply it by this 10K here, because that's the voltage across this resistor. And that gives me 14 volts. And that 14 volts goes into this comparator. And the comparator knows that if I measure 14 volts, for example, um, that's an overheat situation. Uh, these values, I've only made these values up, um, and I've only made these voltages up, but it, I, it's just to show how, how the system might work. Then if we have a fire the fire then uh, will, will cause it to get really warm and now the titanium hydrate would re release some hydrogen so now the hydrogen mixes with the the warm helium and that's again going to increase the pressure and that pressure is going to act on the piston and now it's going to close this switch so now the current comes through this 10 kilo ohm resistor and it goes down here okay so the voltage at this point is the same as the voltage here so it's zero volts so v out is zero and the comparator then knows zero vol volts well that's a fire and uh, the system will, will give an indication of, of the fire
So this is an image then from the Boeing 737-900 IPC. Um, and here is the, uh, the the fire detection system. So you can see, you know, these this is our tube, you know, with the gas in it. And there's the, uh, what I call the 10K resistors. They may not be 10K, but there's the resistors here. And the, those voltages then are then fed into a, into a computer somewhere that will determine whether we have a fire or not. So, uh, you know, we might have some sort of um, fire detection module, for example. So this fire detection system might be part of the auxiliary power unit. Um, we will have uh, two loops. So we'll have a loop A and a loop B. So here, here's my 28 volt supply. Here's my uh, resistors. So these are the switches that are closed by the, the pressure in the, in the tube. And that's coming into the comparator. And the comparator then will tell us if we have a fire or an overheat or a fault. And that's feeding in from loop A. And we'll also get the same from loop B. So this might be the APU, for example, right? So it's the fire detection system in the APU. So <clears throat> the logic in here says, well, if loop A tells me I have a fire and loop B, so they're coming to this loop AND gate. So when both loop A and loop B tell me I have a fire, then I'll trigger the warning system. So it has to be A and B. Or if loop B and loop A tell me of an overheat, then it'll give me an overheat warning. And if loop A and uh, and or, in this case, and or loop B have a fault, then that will uh, give me a, a a fault there. The real problem though is is the fire. Okay, so you know what we don't want is to get an indication on one from one loop that we have a fire and an indication on the other that we don't because then uh, you know you don't know whether it's a faulty detector or whether you actually have a fire so that's why they use the and logic for the fire however you know it may happen that one of the loops might be uh, unserviceable so let's say this is unserviceable so it's not working well you know, if it's detected before flight, then the pilot can actually um, tell the system, you know, I want to isolate loop B. And in that case, we get rid of the AND logic. And now it's just one or the other. Okay, so if loop B isn't working, it will just work off loop A. But you're, you're physically telling it to, to not to look at loop B. But the default setting is A and B. Okay, so that's uh, electro-pneumatic fire detection systems.